It's a pleasure to be here today and, and share with you some thoughts about the way we are dealing with disruption and with this, let's call it, new phase of, of technology-driven change in the insurance, in the insurance industry. Um, since you probably don't know much about, uh, about Fidelidad, um, let me just give you a, a small background info on, on Fidelidad. Fidelidad is a company with over 200 years history. It was founded in 1808 in Portugal. We are the number one uh, insurer in Portugal, both in life and non-life. We also have Elf, PNC, so a whole bunch of products and, and services on that. We have overall 28% market share in our home market, uh, both in life and, and no life. We are a 4 billion euro premiums uh, company, as we say in insurance. We are present in almost every product category, and we are an award-winning company in the insurance business. What basically this means is that people recognize us that in terms of service levels, we are good at what we do, okay? So this is the, the, background, uh, the background of Fidelidad. We are a multi-channel, a truly multi-channel company in the sense that we sell insurance through brokers, through tied agents or exclusive agents. We sell through multi-brand agents. We have our own stores. We sell in the major Portuguese bank, in the post office, and we have our own pure play internet company. So we are, in that sense, a truly uh, a, a multi-channel company. Let me just go back here to show you. You might have noticed there, you see that's those strange symbols there, They're, those are actually dogs, okay? Why am I showing you guys this? Because when we're talking about innovation and insurance, probably this is as far as we go. We use a dog. Okay, uh, this, is, this is from our recent rebranding in which we decided to use a dog, actually a red dog, um, because as a symbol for protection and for safety. So that is the rationale behind it. And this, since we wanted to be innovative, we decided to use red dogs, okay? Which is something different, something that an insurer typically wouldn't do. Okay, but this is as far as we go in terms of non-linear thinking and uh, creativity and fun. Okay, so this is insurance. It's not supposed to be fun, so let's move on. Um, okay, just to let you guys know, basically insurance is, as I say, insurance is not the most innovative industry in the world. Uh, we all have... For years, I've been talking about cloud, mobile, social media, all of this. More recently, a little bit more about Internet of Things and big data. Um, we did change some things over the years. Uh, for instance, we have now mobile apps. We have improved our websites. Uh, we actually send SMSs to customers and things like this. Uh, we have a social page. Uh, so yeah, we do the basic stuff. But in reality, this has not really changed the fundamental way of doing things in insurance. So it basically stays the same. What we are going to have now is completely different because with the Internet of Things and, and big data, this, this has really the potential to create a massive wave of change in the, in the core of the business. And what, that is why, because the core of the business is in, in insurance in the end is about assessing risk, is about understanding risk and then pricing it properly, okay? And this in the past has been made basically by, you know, using proxies, using past data, uh, lots of statistics, and then come up with the pricing that you would offer a specific customer based on whatever behavior we think he has. With Internet of Things and with big data, things will change dramatically because we will be able to assess the specific behavior of a certain customer, okay? And this has impacts in motor, this, is, this has impacts in health, this has impacts in home insurance, in, in so many other fields in which we operate, okay? Let, let me just give you an example. This is not very new, everybody heard about it. In telematics, now we have sensors in the cars assessing the specific behavior of a specific customer. And this would allow us to understand is level of risk. In the home, the same way, we are going to set up sensors so that we can actually have a better notion of risk, we can actually prevent uh, better the, the level uh, of a claim when we have one, um, or for instance in health we can have wearable sensors that would in theory uh, give us more information about the specific risk of a, of a, of a, of a certain individual. Okay, So this is a major change because instead of looking towards the past and instead of looking at big groups, we're looking at individuals on real time. So this will, will, cre cre will really create a massive level of change. Plus, 
we have lots of recent examples of people doing interesting things that, in theory, uh, are having success. So this is, so we have all, all the, the context for, for, a major, for a major change. Just a couple of examples there that you see in telematics or in, uh, in, uh, in home insurance. In reality, for, for the ones that actually know it, that, that example is actually about British gas, and it's not really about insurance. But it, it's important to understand that nowadays, probably the way to do it would be partnering with somebody to, which is not an insurer, okay? And has the right, and has the right, um, and has the right environment to make, it, to make it happen. But I will not spend too much on this. But then, okay, so things are going to change. The context is completely different. There is, we have the drivers for change. And everybody tells you, any consultant we tell you, will tell you that, um, look, there's a bright future out there for the ones who make it, and of course you're going to be bust if you don't do it. But the problem is, for an insurer, we, are, we have so many things we don't know, honestly. First of all, there's so many things we could be doing in health, in, in motor, in home insurance. There are so many initiatives that we don't even, sometimes we don't even know where to start, okay? What would be the right priority? What would be the right technology to use? Yesterday we talked about some of the, some of the technologies and they were not here, like some of the things that disappeared in the last 18 months. Will I be using some of the sensors that in 18 months are not going to be there anymore? So how will I support this stuff? Will I have the capability to, 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 to give service on, on, on such, a, on such a, a, um, a technology? Which providers do I choose? Um, is there really a business model in some of these things? We don't really know. So actually, we have lots and lots of questions to be answered, and not so many answers, uh, and not so many answers today. So this is the situation where we are. We are, we are facing a major wave of change, and we are a little bit puzzled about, okay, how should we approach it? Because we, need, we know that we need to approach it. Plus, there's a slight problem, and this touches some of the things I've been, we've, that we've been talking about here. Most insurers, we have not addressed the basic stuff, okay? No, our IT is not that flexible. We have loads of problems with complexity. We had loads of problems with, with legacy systems. Flexibility is clearly not our strongest point in IT. And to complement this, on the business side, we also have a big problem. Because insurers are only now, especially more traditional insurers, are only now starting to discover that it, there is one strange thing called a customer. Okay? Because up until now, basically, insurers only cared about the agents, the intermediaries. So, look, how am I going to deal with the customer now? I'm not used to it. The customer is that creature that when he has a claim, will come back to us asking for something. So that means that I'm going to interact with him now. That is very, very strange. So that is a completely different, a different frame of mind, and not only to the IT people, to the whole organization. The example is of, that I'm mentioning there, better customer interaction. If you ask a specific customer what, what are the improvements that he would like to have on his, on his insurer, people will tell you simple things like, look, I would just like to have a simpler website, please or I would just have simpler explanations about products, or please give me something that is personalized to my, to my own interests. So we're talking about basic stuff in that sense, that this is what makes the challenge much bigger than, uh, than, in, other, than in other industries. So basically, faced with this problem, what we're trying to do at Fidelidad is, what we're trying to say is we're taking a pragmatical approach. In that sense, okay? So it will be very, very hard to change the whole organization like this. So we're taking a pragmatic approach. We're basically splitting, splitting things. Yes, we are trying to keep, to keep up with what we could call the revolution. We are creating a digital lab, a specific team that is going to look at everything that is happening. We're going to do, and we are doing already, benchmarking in all sorts of, of, of not only competitors, but also other industries. So we're trying to understand what is going on. We are considering and starting to do open innovation, and we are partnering with other players, players from other industries, where we think we can, where, where we think we can learn. So what we're doing in the end is trying to encapsulate a certain part of the organization that is basically assessing how, how we can deal with this massive wave of change. And uh, on the other hand, we are focusing on the basics, okay? Um, 
the basics are overwhelming. So we cannot lose that, we cannot lose that, uh, that idea. The basics for us are overwhelming, so we need to focus mostly on the basics. This means in the back office, we need to simplify our, RT, our IT architecture. We still need to handle issues with back office and efficiency. We still have to do that. Uh, we have to, de to develop our data architecture in order to prepare it for, for big data. And I always use that, uh, that comment, we need small data. Okay? So, when we're talking about big data, big data is a big thing, but let's be very honest. In insurance, at least, we have loads and loads of very useful information that we do not use at all. And this is what I call small data initiatives. In information that is incredibly useful for everybody and nobody uses it in the organization. Okay? So, this is a must. This is the, the areas where we, need to, where we need to focus. And on the front, of course, we are improving the flexibility in terms of the front office. We have to be much more agile. We are building uh, new CRM capabilities in order to have what we call a multi-channel integrated view, because the customers nowadays, they are not pure internet or they are not pure physical channels. They are what we call hybrid customers. So we need to have an overview of the customer behavior in all of these channels. And we are trying to improve online experience of the customers, okay? But this is not an IT issue, let me tell, or not only an IT issue. It is a business issue because one of the, one of the key things to do this is we need to have simpler processes and not to do what we used to do before, which is automate whatever we were doing in the typical complex way that insurers do. And we need to do this for a change with input from our customers, which is also something that we're not very, we're not very used to. So the way we are approaching it at Fidelidad is, in a sense, this pragmatical way, which is also probably not only pragmatical, it's the only thing we can do, okay? Instead of moving, and I cannot, instead of moving from the place where we are today and to be disruptive, we, can, we don't think we can do this, uh, at least in one step. We need to learn, we need to improve all our processes related with the customer, and while we do this on the marketing side, on the, on, the, on the business side, we will do what I call our homework on the IT side. So what we're doing is we're buying time to prepare for more disruptive, for more disruptive business models that, to be very honest, we don't know which they are now, yet. Okay? So there are so many things we don't do, or we don't know yet, that we don't, we don't really know which are going to be those business models. What we do know is that since we are in insurance, and insurance typically, the pace of change is different, slightly different, typically slower. We think we'll have a little bit more time than some of, some of the other industries that are going to be disruptive. And we think so because there are several issues that help us in that sense. First of all, customer adoption is an issue. Some of these things that we're talking about will require a significant customer adoption, and I'm not really sure about how many of you in, your, in the room will want these fantastic sensors in your car to assess your driving behavior. I'm not sure if you want your sensors in your wrists to assess your health so that the insurance company can control you and tell you that they were going to raise your health insurance price because you're eating too much. You know, things like this will present an issue. Um, also, regulation, in a sense, is, is a barrier. Uh, data privacy issues are, thing, are things that will, will come up in the way and, are, and, and that will be significantly, especially in Europe. And um, therefore, we think we have a little bit more time than some other industries, but we need to prepare for the disruptive, the disruptive business model. So this is the way we are looking at things uh, in a, what we call a pragmatical way. Uh, but in theory, it's what we can do because we cannot jump from the dinosaur stage into the Star Wars stage. That's not the way we do things at insurance, so we have to be a little more, have a, 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 a bit more phased approach than, than, in other, than in other businesses. One last thing that I would like to comment on uh, with you guys is that you might have noticed that I have not been talking too much about this conflict between IT and the business. Um, to be very honest, I think in our case we don't have we don't have um, stone cats, we have stone dogs. 
and they are everywhere. So everybody understands that we have those in the IT area and we have those in the business area. So we're not into the stage nowadays in which the business or the marketing guys are basically conflicting with the IT guys anymore. We are in a stage where we're trying to address the issues in a sort of partnership model. So if we do it, we'll do it together. If we don't do it, we will not, will not do it together. And that is the main, that is the main, um, that is the main message in that sense, which is, look, we've gone through the stage where the, the marketing guys would be complaining heavily about the IT, and the IT guys have been complaining heavily about, uh, about the marketing guys. Nowadays, people are working much more, more than ever together to try to address this particular issue and this major wave of change. Thank you very much.